This is the growth strategist, Eldon Ambler. And I'd like to talk to you about launching a second or third enterprise, even when you're not flush with money. Just a couple of tips for you to think about. Of course, you know, nowadays, is there any such thing as extra money? I mean, even the large corporations are like squirrels. They're, you know, hoarding their acorns as though there was destruction from gypsy moths and their beloved oak trees are gone. And then on top of that, there were three and four and five terrible winners. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, it'll involve more work and a bit more creativity, but there definitely is money out there, and it's worth thinking about, um, you know, the people who want to replace some of their lost retirement money. They might be able to do it through you. First, I want you to think about real estate. Now, wait a minute, don't run away. I do know that the real estate market's been slammed, but I also am seeing some improvement in the economy, and the housing prices are actually low. So, here's a question. If you would move, relocate, to launch your next enterprise, is this a time for you to consider going into a smaller residence, smaller building? You could qualify for a larger loan, and it would be larger than the mortgage, which gives you a little more money than you had. Remember, the premise of this is, how do you launch another enterprise when you're tight on cash? Next thing, I'd like you to think about the variety of banks out there. They are not all the same. Now, it may not be like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart, where, you know, character loans were being made left and right. But character does matter, and whether or not you're known to somebody in a community bank is considered. Now, you do need to have a good business plan, but think about it. Some of the community banks out there are quietly growing because they're cherry-picking some of the accounts. People who were really angry at the large financial institutions that needed to get bailed out, and they don't want to be contributing to them. Think about that. Third thing, I'd like you to consider the U.S. Small Business Administration. Now, some of you might not think about that because this is directed to presidents of mid-sized companies. So you may think, you see your, your business as too big for the SBA. But remember, we're talking about a new enterprise, a second or a third enterprise, and your cash is tight. You may well qualify for what the SBA could do for you in your new enterprise. Fourth, I'd like you to think about private investors do some comparisons. If your business is going to generate more than 10% net or 10% return for them, it beats most of the mutual funds. Fifth, I want you to think about how much money you and your family really need or how much money a potential franchiser truly needs because if they could forego a little bit of salary, maybe the franchiser could be willing to put up a little bit of money to fund your startup. Think about it. You might be franchising before you even launched. Sixth, I don't want you to forget the economic development authorities that are out there. They are charged with growing the economy and supporting enterprises that have a potential to bring jobs to the state. And like the banks and the SBA, you'll need a decent business plan, but don't forget the EDA. And in some states, it's a very exciting group of people that know what they're doing. And seventh, I'd like you to think about investment funds, angel networks, and even venture capital firms. Now, they're not seeing as many proposals being given to them these days, so you're not necessarily going to be dropped to the bottom of a great big pile. And if you have some, a product that's in an exciting target market, has some international potential, and is an innovative technology, all the better. Uh, you have a much better chance of getting a positive reception. I really like to suggest to you that you also look for states that have the right kind of tax laws related to capital gains. I've seen that some private investors, they're less likely to go in and invest with you if they're going to get hit with a huge tax obligation later on when your company works. This is the growth strategist, Eldana Ampler, giving you some suggestions about how to launch a second or third enterprise even when you're cash tight.